Good evening, guys. Uh, welcome to the second part on the Getting Started to Robot C tutorials. Uh, today, I guess we'll go on and we'll do some servo controlling and hopefully we'll get onto some joystick functions as well. So, if we just jump back into where we were yesterday, and what I'm going to do is I'll just name one of my servos just to make it a little bit easier. And we're going to go ahead and make this servo move. So it's similar to how we did a motor command, but instead we're just going to change motor to the servo. And of course, the name for the name of our servo, which is what I've just, just named it as ARM. And instead of doing a power between 0 to 100, as we did with the motor. For a standard servo, we can set it, give it an exact position between 0 and 255. So 0 being left, 127 being about midway, and 255 being at the end. So I'm just gonna, we'll just set it to the midpoint-ish, wait a second, and then we can set it back to the start more. Okay, there appears to be a glitch where it doesn't like it if you customly name your server. So if we just keep it named as server one, maybe there's a way around it, but that was an issue that I came up with the other day. So if we just keep it named as server one, then we're all good. So this is nice and easy for a standard servo. You can just just give it a position. Say you want to go near the right. Just give it two hundred. Something similar to that. But what we can do is let's create um, a variable. Hopefully you're sort of into the whole idea of variables and all that. But what we're going to do is what we could do is read where the actual position of the server. So what A is going to hold now is going to be zero because we've just set it to go to zero. But what this means is we can what we can do is set um, the position of the servo to what it was plus a certain amount. So what this will do is it will increase the position of the servo one by five. So what this will do is if we put this in some sort of loop, um, then this will just forever be increasing the position by five. But that's the basic idea. So we can, so I'll just go over that again once more. We can set it to midpoint, left, right, um, and we can get its position like that. So that's some basic servos for a standard servo. But what we're going to do is a continuous servo as well. For a continuous servo, it's similar, but not identical. So we use the still say use the same servo. Servo two is equal to, but this time, if we put zero, it's going to mean it's going to run anti. I believe it's anti-clockwise. 127 will be stopped and 255 will be running clockwise. So if we set it to zero, it's just going to forever be going anti clockwise at a set uh, rate. If we then set it to 127, excuse me, 127, then it will stop. And we can set it to 255 to make it run clockwise. But we can also, okay, what we can also do is change the rate 
that a servo can move. So if we servo, we're going to use the servo change rate command, and I'm actually going to look this up in the help quickly because I can't remember what it is. A range between. Um, looks like there's no set well okay there's no set thing but what this specifies is how many changes of position per second so the default is I believe it's 10 so if we want to make the servo go faster we can just run this command before um, you move the servo so it's probably more useful for continuous servos but I don't know so what we'll do is we can just set we'll set it to I don't know something ridiculously fast 50. So what this does is increases the servo's speed effectively, and then just sets it on full whack for clockwise. So that's pretty much it for servos. Um, what I think I'll actually do first is I'll go over outputting. Um, a string onto the NXT, so you can, well, you can use it for debugging or seeing what position a servo is at. So what we can do is first we need a, a variable, a string variable. Uh, we'll call it. I don't know. Let's output the position of the servo. So we'll call it servo pos, and. What we're going to do is make that equal to A. I don't know if it's going to like that. Yep, that's fine. So, we'll make, so we've already got A as the value of servo, uh, the position of the servo. So now what we're just going to do is just convert it to a string. Although that's that's not actually no, that's not required. Let's let's skip that out and do it a different way. What we're going to use is an XT display string. Now, what we this takes three parameters. It takes a line number, the actual string that it wants to output, and then the variables that you want to interlace into that string. So, what we're going to do is percentage d. Uh, yep, yeah, what this will do. What this then does is it will take this string and where it finds these placeholders it will replace with variables. I'm, I'm not going to go into this into too much detail but you can do a, I believe D will do a, um, an integer or we could change S if A is a, very, um, a string. So if we had string A, uh, string servo pause is equal to A and we want it here servo position. This would display if it's a string or you could equally or you could do servo what sort of display is well, what it says here servo colon space and then the value of servo position. So well that's how to output strings onto the NXT. Um, I think we've got enough time. We'll do a yeah, right. Let's do a quick overview on functions. So, as it can, as you can see, we've. Um, I don't know how to. Right. Let's. I'll just create a function. What a function does is it allows you to have a um, a section of code that is repeatable. So this, oh, I'll just mention here, this, um, the NXT has eight lines. So this first parameter can be anywhere between one and eight inclusive. So actually, let's just make this four, just so it doesn't conflict with this pass line here. So what this does here is the void just specifies that it's not, the function is not going to return a value. If we wanted to return an integer, we can have int there or float for a decimal point or whatever. But no, we don't want to 
return anything. So it's just going to be a void. And what this means is we can run. If we type in here, hello world, what this will do is this will run the function up here. So this line here will run an XT display string, blah, 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 blah. So it can be very useful, especially if you've got, uh, say you've got a move servo up by move servo up, we'll just call it. And in here you've got your, um, oh, it looks like I deleted it. But um, say so you've got here, you've got servo, servo one is equal to servo value of servo one plus five. So now instead of typing out that every time you want to move the servo, you can just do blah, blah, blah. Move it up, sorry, you should have semicolons there. But as you see, it's, it provides a lot more repeatable method of coding. So I'll show you how we've used the function. Well, actually, we've used tasks for many of our things. But I'll, I'll go into tasks a bit later. But we've got, you can just imagine them as functions for now. We've got um, moving left function and moving forwards function and moving back and moving right and moving diagonal um, rotating functions arming up arm down functions and that's what just makes it a lot easier for when you come into using joysticks we've got it just be we can run through something check if the joysticks or the joypads being pressed and just run that function it's just so much quicker so much quicker. So, I think that's about it for this tutorial. Um, the next time I'm going to go ahead and do joysticks and tasks as well, I think. Joysticks and tasks. Uh, yeah, sounds good. If there's anything else you want me to cover, then send a comment or inbox us or whatever you want to do and I'll do a cover it in the next tutorial or you could twitter me at ollie95 um, or you could twitter the grey matter which is uh, grey matter robotics UK I think I don't know if I could spell it right but Yeah, that's not found it anywhere. It's on our YouTube. I'm sure it's on our YouTube. We've got links, or you can go to our website, greymatterrobotics.com. We've got a link to our Twitter somewhere on there. So, yeah, just leave a comment or tweet us or whatever. And if you don't understand something, leave a comment. I'll either go over it in more depth in the next video, or I'll just write back and explain it better there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next bit.